So leading straight on from our last video where we were talking about standard materials, I'm going to start talking about the maps area now and how we start to load 2D images into these maps in order to help us make um, sort of surfaces that are realistic. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is this channel here, which is the diffuse color channel. Now, really, um, what I want to do with this is I want to start sort of making some, some actual materials. Okay, I'm not just going to play around and say, oh, put this in there, blah, blah, blah. What we're going to do is we're going to make a brick texture. Okay? So into my diffuse color channel, I want to try and get a 2D image of bricks. Okay, now there's a couple of different ways that I can do that, but probably the easiest way is to come here and open up from my utilities is the asset browser. Now the asset browser is incredibly useful because it does exactly what it says in the tin. It allows you to browse the assets that you've got on your computer. Okay, you can also use this surprisingly enough to um, browse the internet with as well, which uh, I've always found um, rather amusing. So there we go, there's as many as I can fit on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my architectural materials here. And you can see we've got lots of materials. And in order that I can get a material that looks slightly bumpy, I'm going to go and try and find a brick texture, which is, let's give it a few seconds here, which has got a corresponding bump map with it. Now, you'll notice that I'm actually in the install folder for 3D Studio Max, so I'm in Program Files. Now, I've got Program Files and Program Files x86. That's because I'm using a 64-bit system here. Uh, so it's under Program Files x86 32-bit, Autodesk 3ds Max 10, Maps. And you can also see that's up here in the title bar at the top. So as I keep sort of scrolling down through here, eventually, eventually we'll get to masonry, which we have done. There we go. And I've got this image here, which will do for the purpose. And there it is. It's a picture of bricks. Okay, so a fairly standard picture of bricks. You'll notice there's no real shadowing in there. There's just a little bit underneath each one of the, these bricks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag and I'm going to drop that into the diffuse color. And you'll see instantly that that appears on our 2D map up here. Now, because bricks are not known for their glossiness, I'm going to reduce that right the way down. Move this out of the way, and I'll just press render. So you can see now what we've got is a picture of a brick material applied to this geometry. All well and good. So we'll close that off. And... We'll just click on this and we'll look at some of the some of the things that we've got in here. Now what we've got is we've now got, if I look at my uh, material map browser, you see we've got our diffuse material here. That's the top level. It's top level diffuse material. And then I'll click, oh, there we go. There's our diffuse color map. So, sorry, my um, diffuse, uh, my top level shader. And then this is the diffuse color channel. So within that, I've got a few options here. I can either tile the material, which obviously I want to do, and how many times do I want to tile it? Well, once, that's fine. Uh, we've got the actual name of the material here, which is useful. And I can also, if I view image, I can actually crop this down rather interestingly, and I can say, well, actually only use this portion of the image. Ignore the rest of it and just use that portion. So we don't really need to worry about any of that for the moment. All we need to know is that I've put a diffuse a bitmap into the diffuse channel. To go one level up from that, if we look at this, this is a bump map. Now, looking at this, it's not actually as good a bump map as it could be. I'd actually prefer that to be more mid-tone greys. What you'll find with the default with the default materials that come from um, Autodesk is that some of them haven't been created in the best way that they could have done, not with as much care as they could have done. Really, I'd like that to be more grayscale. I'd prefer it to look more like this. Yeah. Now, 
you can see that that's a little bit of rope. Again, this is this is really rather quite ropey. It's not as good as it could be, but that's really more what I'm looking for. Is this kind of mid-tone grey and a bit of black in there? Um, I don't know what this one's like. That's a little bit better. That would probably do more for a, a displacement map, actually, to be honest with you. Um, so let's see. That's that. That probably matches up with that one. Yes, it's a shame that we don't have a um, a bump map to go with that. But there you go. Wonder if we could use no that one matches something else. So you see, you've really got to go into Photoshop and start playing around with these yourself. I'm going to drag and drop this into um, my bump map anyway, and you can see instantly that we've got. If I double click on there, give that. We've got some bump coming in here. I'm going to up that value to 60. You see, the bump becomes more aggressive so that when I do press my render button you see we've added a little bit more depth into that if with this image I want that to be a little bit more obvious what I'm going to do is just keep upping my bump by a value of 100 or by a value of 30 rather each time so there again we're looking a little bit more aggressive and if I give myself a little bit more of a close up there and render this you can see in actual fact this is beginning to look quite realistic, certainly in this area here. Notice we're getting a little bit of stretch in there. That's more to do with the lighting, okay? That's more to do with the lighting. This is the area that we want to look at, and that's looking great. So, in a short space of time, we've created a very, very simple brick material. Now what happens if I move over here and I want to create a very glossy material? So what I'll do is I'll pick a new material, or a new material slot, and I'll apply that to my teapot. Ah, uh, okay, I know why that was. I think that's because this is, so no, it's 01, 01 default. Ah, uh, you know what, I didn't do look at that. Show standard material. See, it's always the simple things that can catch you out. Just simply, I looked at my, my teapot there, I thought, where's my material? I couldn't see it. I came back to my materials editor and I pressed this button here, which is the show standard mapping viewport. And of course, my material then instantly appears. So moving over onto this material, this material slot, I'll turn on the background. I'm going to start by making it quite shiny, quite specular. And then what I'm going to do is down here, I'll open up my maps, and I'm going to look at my reflection channel. Now there's two ways that I can create reflections. Either I can do something called by is use something called a ray trace material, or I can put a 2D image in there. So I'm now going to put a new material in there in a slightly different way than I did before. What I did a moment ago was I used my asset browser to just drag and drop the material into that slot. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go and click on the word none, and then I'm going to browse for that material myself. So we'll click on the word none, and you'll see we've got a whole load of materials to pick from. The one that I'm looking for specifically is ray trace, and believe me, there's an awful lot of stuff in there that anyone with any sense of decency wouldn't be using. So don't worry about all of them. I'll click OK. And there we go. This is the reflective material. Now, just ignoring these settings for a moment and coming back up to the parent, you'll notice that the reflection is set at 100%. Really, before I go in and change anything else in there, I want to knock this down to 25%, because believe me, or even 20% in actual fact, anything more, much more than that, and you're just gonna get like a flat mirror occurring. So now if I press render, what you'll see is this teapot isn't just very shiny, but it's also reflecting other teapots and other CG 3D elements within the scene. So that's really rather quite clever. If I wanted to, I can clear that slot there. I could put a 2D image into there. Now, assuming I haven't changed it, there we go. So I'll go back to my asset browser and I'll look for my reflection maps that I've got here. And what I could do is I could take, uh, we'll take this because it's quite detailed, and I'll drag and I'll drop that into the reflection channel there. Reduce it, and again, I'll turn the aggressiveness of that down to 
That's really the effect that this is having on the material, whether it's a 20 or 100% effect. Um, what you can see there is, that's the 2D image that I had that's now reflecting the background, although now it's, it seems to be within an environment. It seems to be that it's reflecting an environment that it's around. Unfortunately, what it's not doing is it's not reflecting any of the materials anywhere near it anymore. So what we need to do is we need to find a compromise between those two. And that's actually found by clearing that map out, clicking on None, and coming back to our ray trace material. Now you'll notice as soon as we went to our ray trace material, uh, I turned that down to 20%, and I, I just ignored everything in here. Well, now we're actually going to come back to this a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this radio button, and under my background I'm going to define a 2D image in there. And that 2D image is going to be from my asset browser, and it's going to be this, um, this cube map again. So I'll drag and drop that in there. And now I'm going to render this image again. And what you'll find is we've now got a hybrid of not just our 3D objects being reflected from our scene, but also we've got this pseudo fake environment being reflected as well. So if I had more than one CG element in my scene and I wanted it to be reflective, say for example a car, and I wanted it to reflect maybe other elements of the car on the, the body paintwork, but I also wanted to pretend that, that that car was in an environment, this is how I'd do it. To run over that again briefly, I would quite simply create or go to, by clicking None, I would go to my ray trace, put a ray trace in there, I'd select this radio button and then I'm going to put a 2D image map in there as well. And that's going to give me this really nice, really, really kind of quite realistic look and feel to what we're doing here. Now the next thing that I'm interested in is opacity maps. And the best way that I can show that is if I make a copy of this base and move it up above the objects. So shift and drag, there we go, and I'll look at that from sort of a top down view. First thing I'll do is apply this default material, and then what I'm going to do is go straight to my maps. Now in my asset browser, what I'll be able to do with that is go to my architectural materials, and browsing down here, what I'm looking for is I'm fairly sure I've got a chain link fence or something like a chain link fence. In fact, it might be in Pro Materials in actual fact. Um, so we'll wait for a few seconds just for this to draw all of the materials in there. There we go. So as I come down, there we go, chain link fence. Right, so we've got chain link um, bump, chain link cutout. So I'll drop that into the bump map for all the use it'll be. And I'll also put this into the opacity channel. Now you'll notice what's happened, if I close that off, you'll notice what's happened is instantly what we've got here is it looks like it's been cut out, so we've lost some of the material. If I come back to my shader parameters and I make that two-sided, you can see that if I rotate around this, we'll, it looks as if I'm looking through like a, a, a ball, like a cage. And if I show this map in my viewport, you can see instantly that I can see straight through it. So if I now render, what I'm going to get is a really nice look and feel of a chain link fence that if I, again, if I view this from a distance, starts to look quite realistic. It looks as if we're looking through some kind of a chain link fence. It's probably a bit small there. Let's do that again. There we go, we've got this really, really great look as if we've got some kind of a 3D chain link fence going on there. And that saved me a whole load of time and effort and energy because you think how much effort I'd have to put in to sort of model that by hand. So really, that saved me a lot of time. So that's how I make my basic materials, um, how I add bump mapping on, how I add reflection maps, and how I work with the opacity channel.